Hello everyone. Uh, today we are diving into Unit 6, Lesson 1 on the Human Heart. Uh, these will be our, our final lessons uh, for this semester and we are talking about the human heart. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now the human heart is a part of the cardiovascular system and the cardiovascular system has several components, one being cardio or heart and then vascular system, which is comprised of vessels. And there is a third component of the cardiovascular system, and that would be the lungs, okay? So those are the three components of your cardiovascular system. So that's these three guys, heart, lungs, and vessels. And vessels are things like veins, arteries, and capillaries. And we'll talk about those in depth in another slide. But the goals of the cardiovascular system are simple. They are to oxygenate blood, and they are to remove waste. Now, what kind of waste does blood carry for our bodies? And that waste is in the form of a gas called CO2 or carbon dioxide. Remember, when we breathe in, we oxygenate the blood, goal one of the cardiovascular system. That oxygen is brought through our vessels, okay, specifically our arteries, and through the capillaries where gas exchange occurs in the capillaries, where oxygen is uh, put in to make ATP, the cell's energy source, and in return it picks up CO2, all right, carbon dioxide, and that is a waste gas, and that is removed from uh, our body via the cardiovascular system. So again, your goals are oxygenate blood, and remove waste. The three components are heart, lungs, and vessels. Now the human heart has four chambers. Two atria, okay, uh, plural would be atrium. So two atria at the top and two ventricles at the bottom. It beats around 100,000 times a day, so that's quite a lot. It is approximately uh, the size of two hands clasped together. So if you put your hands together where your right thumb overlaps over your left thumb, that is basically the size and make a real ball fist up with your two, uh, two hands. That is roughly the size of your heart. Uh, it has a mass of a full soda can and it pumps approximately one and a half gallons of blood every minute. So it is a very powerful motor, if you will, or engine of, for your blood. And here is a detailed diagram of the heart. And we're gonna go, we're gonna spend a good amount of time here because I wanna show you the flow of the blood um, and how it actually functions, okay? And you may want to reference, as I go through this, you may wanna reference the slide underneath it as you're listening to the video uh, because I will be outlining these six steps uh, that blood flows uh, through our heart. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, our blood comes from our body from the largest vein, so largest vein, largest vein, and it is called the vena cava, okay? And it comes in, well, it's the same thing, but it, if it's coming from below the heart, so that would be from your trunk or your legs, it's called the inferior vena cava. And if it's coming from your upper portion, so like your brain, head, that area, uh, it's coming from the superior vena cava. But the largest vein is the vena cava. Okay, so make sure you know that vena cava, largest vein. Write that down. So here's a big star by it. Now, blood flows in the direction of the arrow, okay, from the superior vena cava, it flows down, and it flows up from the inferior vena cava into the right atrium. So this is step one. Blood flows to, oh, hold on one sec. There we go. Blood enters the heart into the right atrium in, through the vena cava, largest vein. All right. Next, the blood goes from the right atrium into the right ventricle. Okay. So it goes this direction following this arrow. So blood pumps into the atrium through this valve, this one way valve. You can see how it's kind of arced in this direction. What that allows is blood flows through it, but it can't get back out. So it does. Blood does not go that direction, okay? Blood only flows one way through this valve, and it's the tricuspid valve, uh, but you don't need to know the name of the specific valves, 
all right? So next, the next step is it goes up into the pulmonary artery. So this is gonna be step three. And the blood will go to your left lung and the blood will go to your right lung. And remember, as we are talking about this, um, whenever you look at anatomy, you have to look at it as if you are standing in front of whatever you're looking at, all right? So even though this is the left side of the screen, so left side of the screen, we're actually looking at the right side of the body, all right? So that's why it's called the right atrium and the right ventricle, and this is the left atrium and left ventricle, okay? So this would be left lung out this direction, and this will be the right lung out that direction. So the pulmonary artery is unique, okay? Besides the fact that it's delivering unoxygenated blood uh, to the, um, what do you call it? To, to the lungs, all right? And the reason we call it an artery and not a vein is because blood is going away from the heart, all right? Arteries bring blood away from the heart. So everything that's an artery, so this aorta and this pulmonary artery, all of this stuff is going away from the heart. So the only pulmonary, the only artery in your body that delivers unoxygenated blood away from the body is the pulmonary artery. Every other artery delivers oxygenated blood to your body, all right? Vice versa, when we're talking about veins, all veins carry unoxygenated blood. And unoxygenated blood, let me write that, unoxygenated blood carries a lot of CO2. Okay, so it can't carry oxygen because it's chock full of CO2. And because it's got a lot of CO2 in it and no oxygen, it actually is blue in color. Okay, so you'll see in the different pictures we have, uh, whenever we're talking about veins, we're talking about blue vessels. Okay, because veins are unoxygenated and they carry CO2, not oxygen. All right. Now there is one exception, and again, it's this pulmonary set. So pulmonary arteries are unoxygenated blood. It's called an artery and not a vein because it carries blood away from the heart. And the pulmonary vein carries blood back from the lungs into the heart. So that's why they call it a vein because blood is going into the heart. But the exception here is this is the only vein that has oxygenated blood. So the vast majority of veins are bringing unoxygenated blood to the heart through the vena cavas, both inferior and superior into the right atrium, and that's why they're blue. But this one exception, pulmonary vein, brings oxygenated blood back from the lungs. So anyway, so back to our story. Blood goes through the vena cava into right atrium, step one. Blood then flows down into the right ventricle, step two, and then up through the pulmonary artery, step three, that goes to the lungs. The lungs oxygenate our blood, and our return to our body or return to the heart via the pulmonary vein, okay? And it gets returned into the left atrium, okay? So left atrium is oxygenated blood. It then cycles down into the left ventricle, so step five, through the valve here in the left side, and then the blood gets flowed up into the largest vein. Largest vein is called an aorta. And this is step six, where the, or, or, the aorta distributes blood um, to the rest of the body, either one of these or down below, okay? And we'll talk more about those specific parts in just a second. But those are uh, the six steps of blood throw through the heart. Into the right atrium, down into the right ventricle, up to the pulmonary artery, through the pulmonary vein, into the left atrium, down to the left ventricle, and then up through the aorta. And aorta is largest artery. Okay? Good. Wonderful. Let's move on. And here again is the text of that. Make sure you know the blood flow. I'm just saying. Okay? It will definitely help you out um, for everything that we're doing with the human heart. <coughs> so know the blood flow. And obviously it's blue here because blood is unoxygenated before we get to the lungs. 
and then when it returns from the lungs, it is oxygenated. Okay. Now, let's talk a little bit about the specifics of blood vessels. Now, I know we've talked some, but I just want to show you some detailed imagery of that. So veins move blood toward the heart. So that is going from the body. It rep is represented in blue. So all of the blue um, vessels that you're seeing here are veins, and they are moving blood towards the heart. Okay. These guys contain valves, and it prevents backflow. Okay, we don't want blood to backflow and go the wrong way. So they have valves in our veins. So you can see these valves. Actually, it's more like right there. Okay, so this guy. All right, so veins have valves, V and V. They're typically bigger. They, they typically are the largest of the vessels. And there's not as much pressure. And the reason there's not as much pressure is how the heart beats. Okay, and if you've ever heard yourself, heard your heart, um, on a heart rate monitor or on a stethoscope, you would hear a lub-dub sound. So there's the lub and the dub. And the lub is when the atriums uh, contract. So they like pinch in, they squeeze. Okay. When you hear the dub, that is the ventricles flexing and compressing. All right. So the lub-dub is the atrium lub, and then the ventricles are the dub. So the atriums don't have a lot of pressure coming into them because they're already circulating into the heart. And you can see here, this is actually noticeable that the left, the muscle lining from here and the left ventricle is much thicker than the muscle lining here into the right ventricle. Now remember that secondary uh, beat, if you will, the dub or otherwise called, uh, is actually bringing blood from the right ventricle. That dub is pushing the blood up into the pulmonary artery and the only place it has to go to is the lungs and the lungs aren't that much further away than the heart so the muscle here does not need to be nearly as thick because it doesn't have that far to go the muscle here needs to be very thick because now i got to pump blood all the way to the rest of my body okay so that is why we call veins le having less pressure because veins are on the right side of the heart and obviously the muscles just aren't as big on the right side of the heart. The next type of blood vessel we'll talk about are the arteries, and they move blood away from the heart. So it's oxygenated, right? Oxygenated blood uh, obviously is red because it has it's filled with oxygen, and it moves away from the heart through the aorta, which is the largest artery. There are no valves in arteries. It has much higher pressure, uh, and that is due to that extra muscle lining in the left ventricle and then typically they are a little bit smaller than our arteries now smaller still are our capillaries these guys are found in tissues like muscles and obviously your lungs um, they are really really small and they are the site of gas exchange so that is where if you're in the lungs we have co2 getting let off and o2 getting picked up and vice versa depending on where you're at in the body okay so this is where these gases are exchanged in these capillaries. If you want a, a, an analogy of this, your veins and your arteries are like highways, okay? They're main thoroughfares, things that can carry a lot of traffic. Your capillaries are your neighborhood streets. So if you live in a subdivision uh, where there's a lot of little houses and a lot of small streets, that's more like what the capillaries are. And that gas exchange occurs just like a mailman dropping packages off at each individual house in your subdivision. Capillaries are dropping off O2 to each individual cell to make ATP and picking up CO2 uh, to exchange it in the lungs. Okay, And there's just some diagrams and some pictures of um, the circulatory or the vessels uh, in part of the circulatory system. Um, and that's all on that slide. Let's move on. This is an actual uh, slide or a histological slide uh, of these different vessels. This guy is going to be a vein. This guy is going to be an artery. And this little guy down here, that's a capillary. Now I can tell you that the one that I just numbered one is a vein. And there's a couple reasons. One, it's the biggest vessel. Two, the muscle lining or the lining of it is not as thick. This number two is an artery. The vessel is not as large, but the muscle or the lining, if you will, of the vessel itself is much thicker. 
And then number three, this guy down here is a capillary. And he's very, very small, but you can see he still has that vessel. And that is where gas exchange is occurring. Okay. And this is just uh, showing you an overview of the circulatory system. You can see all of the blue here represents unoxygenated blood. So blood comes up from the trunk and legs, comes up from the kidneys, comes up from the liver, and gets dumped into the right atrium. And again, that also comes down from the head and arms into the right atrium. Then step two goes into the right ventricle. Step three goes up the pulmonary vein, or the, yeah, the pulmonary veins. Uh, no, sorry, pulmonary arteries because it's going away from the body. Pulmonary arteries take the blood away from the body, dump them into the lungs, where CO2 is let off through the capillaries. Oxygenated then goes through the capillaries and oxygenates the blood. The blood is returned to the body via the pulmonary vein. And remember, the pulmonary system, and I'll write that again, pulmonary system is the only exception to our normal rule. And our normal rule says, um, veins carry unoxygenated blood and arteries carry oxygenated blood. The pulmonary uh, system is a little bit different. It's actually exactly the opposite. So the pulmonary artery carries blood away from the heart to the lungs. So if blood is going to the lungs, it is unoxygenated. And the vein, pulmonary vein, gives blood from the lungs so that is oxygenated okay and you can write the chemical symbol if you want all right so again artery the hard definition of an artery is that it carries blood uh, away from the heart and veins carry blood to the heart so anyway, back to the overview of the circulatory system once we get back into the heart we're going to go into the um, the left atrium, so that's this guy here, and then the left ventricle, and then up through the aorta and to the rest of the body. Okay? And just kind of summarizes that. The vena cava, again, is the largest vein of the body. Make sure you know these for notes. This will be on quizzes and tests and midterms and all that jazz. So vena cava is the largest vein in the body. It brings blood to the right atrium. It has an inferior and superior. Remember, inferior is from below. Superior is above the heart. You have the pulmonary artery, which brings unoxygenated blood to the lungs, away from the heart to the lungs, which is why we call it an artery. And pulmonary veins brings oxygenated blood back to the heart. And you have the aorta, okay? And that is the largest artery in the body. And it takes oxygenated blood to the body, and it is segmented, if you will, into ascending and descending. So if you remember, the aorta is like this big arch thing, and it's got three valves coming off, and then it just kind of descends down. This is the ascending portion, and obviously that is the descending portion. Okay. And we will put it all together in class. What I'd like you to do before you start on your questions um, that you have for this homework packet, go through and do a mental check. What can you label here? What do you know? What do you not know? All right. Put question marks by the stuff you don't know. And in class, we're going to work on this. All right. So try it on your own. Do your questions. Your video secret number of the day is going to be 41. 41 is your video secret number for today. Uh, good luck, and I will see you in class.